Day 46. Leviticus 17-18. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron, his sons, and all the Israelites and tell them this is what the Lord has commanded, anyone from the house of Israel who slaughters an ox, a lamb, or a goat in the camp or outside of it instead of bringing it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to present it as an offering to the Lord before his tabernacle, that man shall incur blood guilt. He has shed blood and must be cut off from among his people. For this reason the Israelites will bring to the Lord the sacrifices they have been offering in the open fields. They are to bring them to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting and offer them as sacrifices of peace to the Lord. The priest will then sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting and burn the fat as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. They must no longer offer their sacrifices to the goat demons to which they have prostituted themselves. This will be a permanent statute for them for the generations to come. Tell them that if anyone from the house of Israel or any foreigner living among them offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice but does not bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord, that man must be cut off from his people. If anyone from the house of Israel or a foreigner living among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for your souls upon the altar, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore I say to the Israelites, None of you may eat blood, nor may any foreigner living among you eat blood. And if any Israelite or foreigner living among them hunts down a wild animal or bird that may be eaten, he must drain its blood and cover it with dirt. For the life of all flesh is its blood. Therefore I have told the Israelites, You must not eat the blood of any living thing, because the life of all flesh is its blood, whoever eats it must be cut off. And any person, whether native or foreigner, who eats anything found dead or mauled by wild beasts must wash his clothes and bathe with water, and he will be unclean until evening, then he will be clean. But if he does not wash his clothes and bathe himself, then he shall bear his iniquity. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, I am the Lord your God. You must not follow the practices of the land of Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not follow the practices of the land of Canaan, into which I am bringing you. You must not walk in their customs. You are to practice my judgments and keep my statutes by walking in them. I am the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and my judgments, for the man who does these things will live by them. I am the Lord. None of you are to approach any close relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. You must not expose the nakedness of your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother, you must not have sexual relations with her. You must not have sexual relations with your father's wife it would dishonor your father. You must not have sexual relations with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. You must not have sexual relations with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, for that would shame your family. You must not have sexual relations with the daughter of your father's wife, born to your father, she is your sister. You must not have sexual relations with your father's sister, she is your father's close relative. You must not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative. You must not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relations with her, she is your aunt. You must not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife, you are not to have sexual relations with her. You must not have sexual relations with your brother's wife, that would shame your brother. You must not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. You are not to marry her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter and have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives, it is depraved. You must not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is still alive. You must not approach a woman to have sexual relations with her during her menstrual period. You must not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife and thus defile yourself with her. You must not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Molech, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You must not lie with a man as with a woman, that is an abomination. You must not lie carnally with any animal, thus defiling yourself with it, a woman must not stand before an animal to mate with it, that is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves by any of these practices, for by all these things the nations I am driving out before you have defiled themselves. Even the land has become defiled, so I am punishing it for its sin, and the land will vomit out its inhabitants but you are to keep my statutes and ordinances, and you must not commit any of these abominations, neither your native-born nor the foreigner who lives among you. For the men who were in the land before you committed all these abominations, 
and the land has become defiled. So if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it spewed out the nations before you. Therefore anyone who commits any of these abominations must be cut off from among his people. You must keep my charge not to practice any of the abominable customs that were practiced before you, so that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. Matthew 27 verses 27 to 50. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt down before him to mock him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head repeatedly. After they had mocked him, they removed the robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Along the way they found a man from Cyrene, named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his garments by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head they posted the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And those who passed by heaped abuse on him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, scribes, and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, even the robbers who were crucified with him berated him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lima Sabachthani. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He is calling Elijah. One of them quickly ran and brought a sponge. He filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed, and held it up for Jesus to drink. But the others said, Leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. When Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he yielded up his spirit. 